So for the past few days, I've been going around and asking people a seemingly silly question. And before we start, I'd just like to ask you guys to ask that to yourselves. What is food? Now, most people I've asked have given me similar answers. Food is just something on a plate that we eat every day. And technically speaking, sure, that answer works. But the one problem I have with that is well, food is a thing that's been drawing mankind together for millions of years. It's, it's been the subject of everything from trade to health to books. So is food really just something on a plate? Hi, my name is Arjun Ray, and I'm a chef. I love to cook. And today, I want to talk to you guys about my journey trying to find the answer to that question. Growing up in the United States, I've always been exposed to a very wide variety of cultures and cuisines. We have restaurants from around the globe right at our fingertips, and being an adventurous person, I love to take advantage of that. However, I never really thought, where did this food come from? Where did the idea of any of this really come from? The stories behind them. The first time I can really remember thinking about my food was, I remember one time my parents were hosting a Christmas party, and I saw my mom burning what looked like sugar on cups of milk. So I asked her, what is she making? And she told me it was something called a creme brulee. So I went upstairs, I hit up Google, and they told me that it apparently translates to something called burnt cream. And so I was in shock. Why would someone be burning perfectly good cream and then giving it to somebody? So the next morning, I went down to confront my mom, um, when suddenly on the counter, I saw a creme brulee that was uneaten. So being an adventurous one, I took a spoon, plunged it in and apprehensively took a bite. Instead of tasting like ashes and smoke like I expected it to, it was lovely. It was creamy, smooth, it melted right in my mouth, and it was just ingenious to put sugar on top of cream. And I was shocked. Who thought of this? Who burned sugar on cream and then turned it into a dish? It seemed amazing to me. So over the next few months, I went on a deep exploration of French cuisine studying everything from the food of the Middle Ages to the contemporary uses of truffles. It amazed me. There were so many things that were just the result of trial and error and experimentation. Finally, after a few months, I garnered up the courage to create my own dish, a creme brulee. So I stepped up to the stove, did what I saw on the recipe, and although it wasn't great, I was proud of myself because I finally understood this dish, the story behind it, the reasons for its existence. And I found this to be the case with a lot of other dishes, and this is what sparked my passion for cooking. Um, so over the next two years, I really dove deep into cooking, creating all the classical French dishes, and I took that time to really refine my skills. Finally, when I was about nine, I decided to audition for the show Chopped Junior, which is this. So basically what it is, it's a cooking competition, and you have to create an appetizer, entree, and dessert, and you have 30 minutes allotted for each round. So the first few steps of the audition process were pretty easy. It was just summing some pictures on my food and doing a few brief interviews. Then the producer sent me an assignment, which was to create a one-minute video about why is my food unique? Why is it me on a plate? And this was the one part that I struggled with. I really stumbled on this question because why is this me on a plate? I mean, there's probably millions of people out there who can cook French food. This, there was nothing special. I had no connection to the dish. So I decided to take some time off and really spend a, few, to spend a bit of time to just brainstorm how to put myself on the plate. So I had to think, what, how can I connect myself to the stove? How, how can I put myself on there? And the most obvious thing to me was my Indian heritage. Every day growing up, my mom would do our best to serve me traditional Indian dishes. So I grew up on that. And, but I didn't want to just cook Indian food either. I wanted it to be me. Otherwise, it would just be the same thing, just cooking the same thing over and over. So then I got this crazy idea. What if I combined two cultures? So I made this dish called shrimp and risotto. And so what it was, it was risotto, which is classic Italian. And then you have shrimp, but made with some Indian flair. You have some spices in there. And to my surprise, it turned out great, because it was something that I had never tried before. I'd never heard of it. But it was fusion. It worked just right. So after doing this over and over to a few classical dishes, I, 
I decided that that was my style. And so I re-auditioned for the show, and I did that. I submitted Fusion, and that was me on a plate. Um, and I had to do a few more various tasks, and eventually I made it onto the show. And so the actual experience was amazing. They took me out to New York for a few days, and I went to the studio. And I was surrounded by children just like me, kids who found their passion in cooking and had managed to put themselves onto a plate. So the first round, um, so I ended up getting chopped in the first round, um, but it was still an amazing experience. I learned so much from those around me. And so after that, um, so what I had to do was I had to come up with a new idea. You know, I've done chopped. What else can I do? Um, how else can I continue to get my food out there? So I decided my next task was going to be to write a cookbook. And so my cookbook, I decided to start cooking all the fusion dishes I could, all the dishes that were me. Yeah, so, um, so if I sat down, I wrote the recipes, I spoke with people, and finally I, I made my cookbook. So basically what my cookbook was, what it was just, it was, so it had to have a theme. So I decided my theme would be history because I love history. So what I did was I took all of my recipes that I'd written down, all the interviews that I'd done with people, and I spent hours and hours sitting at a table researching each dish. And what I eventually came across was that every ingredient, every single flavor had a history that went back at least a few hundred years or so. You know, the sugar in our chocolate, the syrup we pour in our pancakes, everything has such a storied history. So I found for every recipe, I wrote down a paragraph or so. And so that was my cookbook. And I, I, to this day, I still keep cooking, and I love to research every dish. But the main thing I learned from cooking isn't just how to cook a dish. The main thing I learned from cooking is that everything has a story behind it. That food isn't just something on a plate, to go back to my original question. Food is something, it's an expression. It's what somebody it's how somebody decided to put themselves onto a plate. It's the result of experimentation and failure. And so the one lesson I learned from cooking that can be applied to everything is that put yourself to the fullest like when you do something. Like make sure you're expressing yourself the best you can and that you don't let anything block you. Thank you.